I would say that's usually when I run into deficiencies or sort of sort of issues in my crop that are based on nutrients. A lot of times it's coming from those secondaries, the magnesium and calcium. And calcium, particularly yeah. in, in the, in this, with these types of crops. Uh, another c real basic concept, um, but uh, maybe something that's often taken for granted, but that's important, yeah. is the whole notion that these nutrients can exist in three states. Um, we hope that we're in the sufficient category, which means that we're pl providing an adequate uh, concentration uh, and also the uh, the form in which those are available. <laughs> the sun came right at the perfect angle. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so, so three categories of so either sufficient, deficient, when we're not providing enough, yeah. or toxic. Yeah. And we see all three states pretty regularly. So um, we hope we can maintain that sufficient level. But as you know, that as plants grow and their physiological state changes. Such a moving target. Yeah, so yeah. you can't always start at one level and maintain that level throughout because you may run out of fertilizer uh, or essential plant nutrients, yeah. or in a, in, a, in a hydroponic situation, as you lose water from the system, those, those nutrients might increase to the point where you reach a toxic level and what yeah. if you were going to have say a toxic level how does that oftentimes express itself in these types of crops what do you see when you reach a toxicity so usually toxicities will almost appear as a deficiency of another uh, element so sometimes if I have like too much phosphorus I start seeing more like micronutrient deficiencies or sometimes if I have too much nitrogen but what does that look like well that will look usually like on the top of your plant like some intervenal chlorosis, so intervenal yellowing at the sort of the new growth, uh, sort of the new leaves coming out, usually some kind of iron or zinc deficiency. Um, and then... What about a toxicity? Do you ever see like burning yeah. or, or some kind of, sometimes, uh, particularly with something like boron, you'll get sort of a crinkling effect. Yep. And a lot of times it, when you see things, and we'll talk a little bit later about diagnosing nutritional um, conditions, deficiencies, and toxicities. But a lot of times when you see things that look a little strange, it might mean that time to check the nutritional level because you may have strayed from sufficiency into deficiency or toxicity. Yeah. And uh, uh, those are things that you just kind of, you, uh, you get a feel for uh, as, you, as you get some experience in uh, producing uh, wh whatever crops you're dealing with. Yeah, I know. Definitely when I used to, when I first started working like with greens, I, pretty much they all looked the same to me. Like even one that might have been yellow, like it sort of still looked like a head of lettuce. But then after years and years of looking at so many heads of lettuce, you start to pick out all those little details that it's, you can definitely see, oh, that's slightly yellow on the older leaves, which probably means nitrogen deficient. And then Right, right. And another frustrating element sometimes is that um, you see those kinds of conditions, even though you might have a lot of one thing, yeah. it's like, well, why do I have it here? And here, not very far away, I don't have it or it's worse. And yeah. of course, there are a lot of external con conditions that could be it could be uh, more water in this area, less water in this area, cooler, hotter, all airflow those, and all, it's, yeah. all those externalities yep. that can cause the nutritional condition to go from sufficient to deficient or sufficient to toxic, and that's why um, it's important to kind of have have a handle on what's going on nutritionally, but to understand that deficiencies and toxicities sometimes look kind of alike. And you have to yeah. kind of sleuthing out the what happened can be a challenge. Yeah, the diagnosing part, I know I struggled with that forever. Of you look at like you look at one of those books that they have. This is what a nitrogen deficient leaf looks like, and they have like the whole list of leaves and how they should look based on different nutrient deficiencies or toxicities. And then I'm like, oh, okay, it's deficient in this, and then I add it, and it doesn't help at all. Yeah. Yeah, I think that there are so many of those uh, guides yep. that, and it provides some good information and it's food for thought, 
but you definitely cannot use those as, okay, that's what it is exactly. Yeah. You've got to use those in combination with some practical experience because um, it, it's a, just a lot more complicated than, th there's really no very, there's not a lot of easy answers when it comes to, when it comes yeah. to that.